We have a lot of exciting material to share with you today. Uh, my name is Jason Menchen, is Zach Kaufman. I'm the PM responsible for data aware security posture. And today we are going to cover the cloud data security challenges, data aware security posture, and then go over th data threat protection. Starting with the cloud data security posture uh, challenges. So in, in today's world, we know the data is the new gold. So there are, we see a lot of uh, organization out there that are suffering from data breaches. In fact, 90% of the data breaches that we are seeing are motivated by financial, meaning that attackers are not just looking to penetrate the organization, but they have specific information that they are looking to find within your organization. In fact, we are seeing that because of the vast adoption of cloud, 45% of data breaches happen on the cloud. We are also learning that 82% of the uh, breaches are happening because of human error. And that is something that is continuously happening. So there is a need here to identify if you currently have a, a data breach that is a result of a misconfiguration, but also continuously look for that on an ongoing basis. The data, the cost of data breach are rising as well. It is now on the United States, it's uh, over $9 million. And in fact, on average, it over five, it's over $5 million. I think it's about 12% increase from 2022. So we understand there is the issue, but solving that issue is not that easy. In fact, it's quite challenging. Why is that? Because the cloud data state is quite complex and dynamic. And to, to first to identify all your data, you need to start by identifying where you, what kind of data state you have what kind of data resource they have in terms of storage, database, etc. To be able to get ahead of the threat, you need to also understand your cloud data security posture. So it means that after you identified all your various resources, you also need to understand where you have sensitive data. And to be able to do that, it is quite complex. And of course, to be able to identify what kind of data is there to understand when you have a sensitive data you also it is you also need to understand if there is an ongoing data breach right now because if you have a sensitive data in some resource and currently there is a breach this is your top risk and this is the this is the uh, part that you currently need to address first ahead of any other place ahead of any other task that you have within your uh, repository so we are very proud to announce two new uh, announcing two public previews that we announced during the MS Secure on March 28th. First one is on Defender, C uh, Defender CSPM, and in the Defender CSPM is our new data security posture management. And essentially, we are now allowing you to automatically discover all your cloud data state in a very easy manner. We are also identifying that on a multi-cloud environment, so we are both doing that on Azure Store sorry, on Azure storage, as well, on, as well as on AWS S3. We are identifying attack paths and any potential impact to your sensitive data. We, are also in, we also announced the public preview of the new security capabilities for Defender for Storage, like identifying real-time malware, a real-time blob malware scanning, ability to identify if there is a, some sensitive data exfiltration, and of course, identify if there is misconfigured and malicious use of shared uh, shared uh, access signature keys, SAS keys. So let's start with data security posture. Before we go into uh, data security posture management within our Defender for CSPM uh, suite, we need to uh, just take a minute and discuss on our existing solution, which is Microsoft Purview. Like, what is the difference? So. In, con in contrast to Microsoft Purview that is focusing on compliance, risk, and governance, our new data aware security posture is focusing on the security admin. In fact, it helps you to, uh, it empowers the cloud security posture by identifying and uncovering misconfiguration that could lead to data exposure and data breach, and it's doing that in a very quick manner. So, what is what contains with our solution? So our data aware security posture start, start with the frictionless, agentless onboarding. So this is just a flip of switch, and immediately 
we will automatically identify all your data there across uh, across your multi-cloud environment, meaning both AWS and Azure. We will also identify your sensitive data, both on Azure and AWS, and let you and find that in uh, various resources as well as in data flow. We will uncover risk using our attack path and using our security explorer, and that will help you remediate any risk that you have within your environment. So we mentioned this, that we are doing both discovering of your data state and help you identify your sensitive data. We are discovering your data state on both managed and shadow resources. That goes into storage resources, on databases, and of course, on, da uh, on data flows. And as I mentioned, it is done on a multi in a multi-cloud environment. In terms of identifying your data resource attribute, we are identifying if those sensitive data are exposed to the internet. What kind of permissions do they have? Is it publicly accessible or not? And of course, be able to identify those configured data flow to identify if there is sensitive data moved from some internal private resource into another resource that is publicly available. Let's develop a bit on our data discovery scanner. This is a new, uh, a new kind of scanner that we developed for our new solution. Up to now, most of the scanners that you are familiar with out there are scanning your entire data space to be able to give you insights if you have sensitive data and where it is located. Now, when, it move, when we move to the cloud, the security admin are required to address any security issue quite quickly. So all, this, uh, all the legacy paradigm of first identifying all your data across the your entire data state that could take very long time was not fit for that task. This is why we developed our new scanning engine. As I mentioned, it is, it is done by one-click enablement. You just enable our plan and the scanner immediately will identify your data state. We are an agentless scanner architecture, meaning you don't need to install anything to be able to use our solution. We are employing clustering techniques to be able to provide you predictive scan, so you know how long it will take when until you have results. And we are also employing smart data sampling to provide a really ultra fast scanning capability to identify all your cloud resources and all the sensitive data that is done there. Using that new discovery scanning enables you to do to in to be able to identify if you have a risk to your sensitive data in a very very short time. Uh, addressing all your need in terms of, of a security admin to be able to uh, fix any security breach or any kind of misconfiguration that you have within your environment. Now we did we did take note of our customers' request to sustain their already invested effort on doing classification within the organization. So I'm really happy to to note that we are using the same. Uh, with the same Microsoft Purview information protection labels and custom information type, uh, types that you defined before. But even if you don't use Microsoft Purview information protection, you can still benefit from our built-in over 200 sensitive information types that we have. We group those sensitive information types for you into several logic groups that helps you uh, start as quickly as possible with scanning with the most used sensitive information types, like in groups like financials, PII, uh, credentials, and you can, of course, you, uh, select any other sensitive information types from the other group. In the custom group, as I mentioned before, you'll find all the sensitive information type that you already defined in Purview Information Protection, and they are available for you to use. Same goes with the labels. We will uh, ingress all the labels that you define within Microsoft Purview Information Protection, and we will identify if those labels match any of the resource that we are currently scanning for sensitive data, and of course, we will flag it for you. We will identify the most, the top uh, used uh, sensitive label, and we will use that uh, to flag that specific resource. I mentioned before that we have our new scanner, but we are also, uh, but we are also employing that the all the scanner result that we identify, we are entering that into the our own cloud map. 
using this cloud map, using the facilities like Cloud Security Explorer and attack path analysis enables you to immediately identify your uh, any risk that is currently happening. Using attack path analysis, you're looking at your top risk. So immediately you can identify if there is a, is there is a concern or there is a exposed sensitive data exposed to the internet. And using the Cloud Security Explorer, you can get a, a complete view of all the places that you have sensitive information, even if they are currently not exposed to the internet, and even if their public access is currently closed. Let's jump into several examples. First one is on a data flow. One of the low hanging fruit in terms of uh, misconfiguration is the public RDS snapshots. As we know, in AWS RDS, we see quite often that an organization by mistake would, a, would create a, an RDS snapshot with its access on as public. Many organizations are not aware that when you are setting the access of the RDS snapshot into public, it means that anyone with an AWS account can in fact get that RDS snapshot. We are identifying that risk imme immediately, letting you know that this is the top risk and you need to address that. We are also identified if you have any sensitive information that is currently exposed to the internet. So using this attack path, we are identifying that there is a storage account which, which is exposed to the internet, and also the container within this storage account is publicly accessible. So by scanning the by identifying this risk, we are letting you know what kind of information might leak into uh, might leak and also are alerting you that this configuration need to be addressed. So for example, over in this example, you can see that we identify two sensitive information types, like an EU debit card and a credit card, and we are also giving you evidence of when we found it. For example, on wrapper JSON and customer CC. This is one of my favorite. This is a lateral movement kind of uh, risk, which starts with, in fact, by an internet exposed VM. So you have an, a VM here that is ex, uh, that is exposed and it has vulnerabilities. Now you might think that this is, you just need to fix uh, these vulnerabilities, but if you look more carefully using our attack path, you can see that there is an identity on this virtual machine that allows you to access a storage account. Now this storage account contains sensitive information. Well, identif uh, identifying this Attack path is quite complex, but using uh, MDC uh, attack path, it is quite easy to identify there is in this storage account, this is the sensitive information and identify all the various uh, components along the way that you need to fix. Like uh, you'll get recommendation to install all the fixes to address the uh, vulnerabilities that you have. And also if there was a breach, you'll be aware of what was the data uh, on that specific storage account. Moving to the Cloud Security Explorer, we just we have here an example of all the information that we can get. So for example, here we are looking in our container and I created a query here that looks for all the, all the containers that contain sensitive data and allows public access. I get a list over here and by looking at uh, the result details here, I can also uh, get into the various uh, files that are here, the various sensitive information types, and also the sensitivity level of the that this container has on it. So again, matching or completing the classification across my organization. Last use case that we are going to, go to cover today is ShadowDB which is some of the uh, some of my favorite with with customers. One of the things that customers are not aware of are all those databases that are installed on some VM, but they are not managed. So the organization is not is not familiar with that specific database. What we are doing here is that we are scanning the uh, we are scanning for all those VM, finding all those a SQL, data, SQL uh, software that are installed but are not managed and giving you an insight that in fact you have an internet exposed VM here that has a database that practically nobody knows about 
And also that specific machine has vulnerabilities. So an attacker can take advantage of those vulnerabilities in a, get a hold of that machine and in fact get the that data from that database that nobody knows about. And again, this is something that uh, I always enjoy when we are searching in terms of customers and help them identify uh, this kind of uh, tough risk. OK, let's jump into a poll question and hey, Ethan, help me here. OK, so let's jump. Um, we are just going to ask a, a one question here. Um, if you can just go into the site here to polyv.com, enter DFS storage uh, in the question, of course, enter your name. And then we will uh, give you like two minutes to enter your answering to this question. Essentially, we are looking to, to get your feedback on how do you classify sensitive data on the cloud today? Again, just go to polyv.com and hit enter DF storage in your name and just select one of those answers. OK, we are starting to see the results. I don't know if it's continued to update now, but let's look at the result that we have right now. Uh, essentially, we are looking that uh, some of the organization are doing some manual uh, classification. This is uh, one of the ways of part of the overall organization way of uh, creating a project on classification. So definitely, yes, it's, it's very interesting to see that there is a lot of use of automatic and everything is considered confidential. We are seeing that as well. Like I, everything is confidential. I just need to make sure it's protected. No real need to uh, classify. And also interesting to see that some of the organization are not doing classification. We will be more than happy uh, to speak with you and help you get on board our MDC data aware security posture to help you with that classification. Okay. Thank you so much, Ethan. Passing to you. Thank you very much, Sach. So now we're going to discuss how to keep sensitive data in and malicious data outside our environments using Defender for Storage. My name is Eitan. I'm a product manager in the Defender for Storage team. With me today, we have the entire product team, and we encourage you to ask questions in the chat, and we'll try providing answers as much as we can. So let's begin. We're going to transition from discussing cloud security posture to workload protection. And to understand what great cloud security is, let's start with the end in mind. What do attackers are trying to do and gain? We'll use a simple framework for that. Attackers want to get into your environment and they know that they can do it through your cloud storage because it's a great way to infiltrate and then move laterally because we know that storage is an entry point, it's a distribution point to the organization. And here is a question that I want you to think about. Can files get into my organization without being scanned for malware? So think about your environment, the architecture that you're currently designing for yourselves, for others. Is it possible that files can get into the organization without being scanned for malware? So we're going to discuss this and the capabilities to prevent it, which are available today. Attackers also try to get data out of the environment. They 
want the sensitive and juicy data, and they're doing their best to steal it and doing it undetected. And there are many vendors that are looking at sensitive data, and there's a reason why it's an important trend and everybody is doing it. But when you really look at sensitive data, it's not just about knowing where it is and its configuration, which is very important by itself. I'm referring to the question of if sensitive data were stolen from your organization, would you know that it happened? Would you have the capability to really respond on time? And in some cases, updated all the relevant stakeholders. There is even an IBM report on the cost of data breach from last year indicated that on average, it takes about nine months to know that your organization was breached, which is crazy, but uh, that, that's the reality. Now, attackers also try to take your data and services down. They use infrastructure to corrupt your data and prevent you, your applications, and your customers from accessing it by deleting the data and encrypting it. Defender for Cloud does a lot in this space, but today we're going to focus specifically on malware upload and sensitive data exfiltration. So let's begin with keeping malicious data out. This is how the, probably, the, the problem usually looks. So there's an application, it uploads data to a storage account, and there are consumers downstream. We have users, human users, applications, and the problem is that nowhere there's an antivirus. And when we build the organization and the environment and design the architecture, we always thought that we'll have some kind of an EDR in place with antivirus on them. But it appears that a lot of the data flows are not crossing EDRs at all. And how we usually see customers solve this problem. They put different proxies, VMs in place, and they need to manage and maintain them. And they need to wire everything together. And IT folks usually kind of hate it because it's not easy. And the problem is that these solutions do not scale. They require many resources, moving the data around and complex networking which is then translated to an even bigger attack surface with data flowing there that you need to protect. And in most cases, systems become bottlenecks and there's a lot of load on them. And you need to wait a lot of time to even get the malware scanning started. And this hinders applications and workflows. So how did we solve it? We built a new malware scanning capability. It scans the content of blobs uploaded to your blob storage in near real time. Now, this solution allows you to detect and prevent malware distribution events. The malware scanning itself is powered by Microsoft Defender antivirus technologies. And as soon as a file reaches a storage account, Defender for Storage will immediately read the uploaded content, scan it, and detect both polymorphic and metamorphic malware in near real time. If a malicious file is found, access to the file can be blocked and the scan result will automatically trigger a security alert in Defender for Cloud. And to further investigate the alert, SOC teams can create a Defender for Cloud workflow automation to their SIM solution. So I wanted to show you a quick demo. So just a moment and show you capabilities that we have today. Just a second. So we can see on the right side that we have a website, an application that allows external external users to upload text files, because we know that two things are certain in life, that's Texas and one other thing that I'll uh, give you to research it later. And this web application is connected to a storage account. So every time that the file is uploaded here, it is actually uploaded to this storage account into one of the containers here. So we have the XDR script container here. So I'll try to upload the file. And in this case, I'll upload a malicious file, a, a file that simulates malicious file called an acre. And I think that most of you are familiar with this. So let's 
upload it. And we can see that it was uploaded successfully. So I'll we'll go here, I'll refresh. And if I go and click this file, I'll go down and you see here that I already have the scanning result. So this is real, this has just happened. We scanned the file that was uploaded and you can see that the verdict, verdict is that it is malicious. So I hope you're impressed by how fast it is. Uh, so this is really cool and this is something that is available today. Now, this is all good and this is something that you get out of the box when you enable Defender for Storage with the malware scanning feature enabled. But what if you want to lock access? So this is another example and make it a little bit bigger. This is a storage account where I blocked all the options to access with keys, with different tokens, and I only allow access with something that is called attribute based access control. And this allows roles to access the data based on different conditions. And the condition that I have set here is that I can't access the data unless it was scanned and it is clean. So let's see an example. So we have here one of the containers. I'll go here and upload three files. So we have a clean file, we have a file simulating malware, and we have a file simulating malware that was compressed three times. So we support all file types, and this is an archive file. So upload all of them, and you can see them in the storage account, and I'll try accessing one of the files. Okay, and you can see that I get an error message. So not a problem with the demo, it's something that is expected. This is an error message that customers hate to get, but security professionals really love. It says that I don't have permissions to access the storage account. So this is really cool. You can actually lock the access to the storage account or actually to blobs inside the storage account unless they are clean. But it's more than that. It's not just that they are clean, but it's that they were scanned. Okay, so. In most cases, the scanning results will arrive really, really quickly, but we can't guarantee it. So if you have tons of data that you are continuously uploading to the storage account, you can experience some kind of a slowdown. But this mechanism will allow you to still have access only to files that were scanned and that they are clean. Okay, so if I go to this file, you can see that I have access to it and that it was found to be clean. Now, some, some skeptics may say, OK, but you blocked all the access uh, with keys. We use keys. We use SAS tokens to access storage accounts. Uh, we can't really use identities all the time. And we even have an answer for that. If you'll go here, you can see that there are mechanisms to generate tokens that allow access to the storage account. And they are actually signed with the roles. So if I'll generate right now with a role that I just used to access the data, a new SAS token, I'll provide it to one of the applications. The application will have a SAS token that will enable it to only access blobs that were scanned and that are clean. So this is super crazy. It's uh, an awesome new capability that we didn't have until today, and we're super excited about it. So I'll go back to the presentation, just a moment. OK, so the malware scanning is in public preview. It was announced on Microsoft Secure about a month ago. And one of the things that we are most proud of is that it's an agentless solution and it is super easy to enable it at scale and it supports all the file types. As we saw, the scan results can be viewed in the blob index tag, but you can also consume them in Azure Event Grid and in Log Analytics. And this allows you to build workflows that keep the environment clean and allow you to respond very quickly. So what we saw is just one of the capabilities that you can build. There are multiple things that you can do. You can quarantine the files and you can delete them and you can do whatever you want because we're providing very fast, very reliable results that you can consume in different ways. So I really hope that you're very excited about this, uh, at least as much as we do. 
And we covered right now how to prevent threats from getting into the environment. Now let's discuss keeping sensitive data inside the environment. And I want to bring you back to the question of whether you would know if sensitive data was compromised and stolen from your environment. To discuss that, I'll have to go a bit technical for a moment, so I'll have to, please excuse me. All in general, all the clouds are built on a control plane and a data plane. So the control plane can be accessed with identity and it allows you to create and manage resources. So in the context of Azure storage, you can create a storage account, you can lock it from deletion, you can configure it however you want, and that's the control plane. The data plane in the context of cloud storage is where the data resides and where the operations on the data are performed. The data plane too can be accessed with identities, but it can also be accessed with keys. And almost everyone uses keys. The problem is that there's a whole world of activity happening within the data plane that remains unseen if you only focus on the control plane. The, the general recommendation is to disable access keys and shared access signatures. Yet we see they are incredibly popular. In fact, two thirds of all the traffic in Azure storage relies on these methods for authentication. Shared access signatures are access tokens derived from keys and they have defined scope and an expiration date. And since creating SAS tokens is a client side operation, there is no record of how many you have, how many exist, their permissions and whether they are active or not. And we even know that some customers keep spreadsheets with all the issued SaaS tokens, that at least that they can track on the storage accounts. The problem is that the amount of misconfigured SaaS tokens is alarmingly high, creating opportunities for attackers to exploit. You see, if attackers manage to obtain these keys or tokens, they gain direct access to your data. And detecting leaked or compromised keys and tokens is incredibly difficult because they lack identities, leaving most security teams in the dark because they don't have, they, they can't, they don't monitor the data plane unless they are specifically very oriented to it. And Defender for Storage analyzes all the logs of all the transactions and extracts insights from them. And one of the new capabilities that we released in Microsoft Secure is alerting on what we call entities without identities. We are focused on SAS tokens because our research indicates that a very large portion of them is being used with poor security practices. And we're also aware of all the related security incidents that we're experience, uh, experiencing, that customers are experiencing. So I finished the, the geeky part and now let me show you a, a quick example of a straightforward attack that involves SAS tokens. So here, we'll see how easy it is to steal sensitive data with leaked SAS token. And we'll begin with an insight look of a target storage account in the Contoso Hotel's production environment. So we see here that we have three blob containers with different blobs inside of them. Now the attacker is going to exploit a vulnerable VM and is going to steal a SAS token and steal sensitive data from this production storage account because if the attacker has the SAS token, they have direct access to the data. So you can see here that this is the VM, the virtual machine inside the production environment. Now this virtual, the, the attacker, what they did here, I'll stop for a moment. They use the PowerShell script, a very basic one, to list all the environment variables uh, inside this machine. And you can see here that it's very clear that we have a SAS token that is, this is the authentication method of this application of this machine to upload or download data from one of the storage accounts within the environment. And I'm sure that some of you are saying, yeah, right, like who stores tokens inside the variable settings? And you'll be surprised to know that it happens quite a lot and we see a lot of really bad practices happening in the most security oriented organizations that uh, we're working with. So this is something that is very common and happens quite a lot. 
And now we're going to see that the attacker is going to use uh, another partial script to, and is using the SAS token that they found to download all the data to one of the um, to one of the folders. You can see here that 26 blobs were downloaded from three different containers. You can see here all the data. It's very clear. And this action is very hard to detect because again, no identities were involved, straight access to the data. Now, in this case, the SOC is going to receive security alerts that are indicating a compromised SAS token and a potential data breach. So in our example, we can see that the SOC will receive a security alert that is going to say, hey, you have a SAS token, it's overly permissive, and something very strange happened with it and it was used in a way that is almost never used and we're pretty sure that it's either leaked or compromised and inside the security alert you're going to have all the details on the actor or the details that we have the ip address the different applications the operations that occurred in this event and you're also going to have all the details on the access token itself so it's the permissions, the different protocols, what type of data they can use, the expiration date, and this will allow the SOC to really understand what is this SAS token, when we, was it used, and what are we going to do next? Because we're going to help you with the investigation steps and what and how to remediate this threat, because there are ways to remediate it. Now, if sensitive data was involved in this incident we're going to send you another security alert that is going to say hey you had a sensitive data exfiltration event we detected that sensitive data was involved in this incident and you can see here what type of sensitive data was there what type of files how much files was uh, how much data was downloaded and other details that will provide more context for the investigation process now, there are amazing security companies who help you understand that you have sensitive data and the configuration of the sensitive data. But to see this attack and respond on time, that's a whole different capabilities, capability. And this is one of the things that we're now doing. So we have extended our sensitive data discovery engine that Sah mentioned earlier to enable sensitive data threat detection for Defender for Storage, which means new security alerts are triggered on active data breaches that involve malicious access, exfiltration, or corruption of sensitive data stored within the Azure Blob Storage. We also provide security alerts that are triggered on the events of sensitive data exposure. So it's not only suspicious activities, but it's the events of the sensitive data exposure. With this, you can even build different workflows that will immediately close the public access of sensitive data that was exposed to the internet to prevent an accidental data breach. We're all aware of the misconfiguration problem, how common it is, and that threat actors are always, always scanning all the resources online for this type of data, and they always find them. And our goal with this capability is to improve your ability to detect the the, detect the sensitive data exposure and exfiltration events on time and to better prioritize and investigate and respond to the security alerts that are related to sensitive data. So this is super awesome. We are really excited about this. This is already available. We, we already caught different security incidents that are related to sensitive data and yeah, we're very proud of this feature. So to wrap everything together, Defender for Storage synthesizes Microsoft Threat Intelligence data and behavior modeling signals to identify early signs of data breaches. And this is our core capability. And we've recently announced the public preview of near real-time malware scanning, as well as new sensitive data threat detection to identify potential exposure and exfiltration of sensitive data. Now, these capabilities were released as part of a new plan 
And if you already use Defender for storage, the storage plan in Microsoft Defender for Cloud, you need to migrate to the new plan to use these capabilities. All the pricing information and configuration capabilities are in our documentation. So we encourage you to visit aka.ms slash Defender for Storage to read more on all the capabilities, response mechanisms, and the new granular controls that you now have as part of the new plan. So we wanted to finish this presentation with asking you, what are you most excited about in Defender for Storage? So if you can go back to the poll, whether it's in the mobile phone or in the desktop, please help us by ranking the following. So we have the capability to detect entities that have no identities, meaning detecting SAS tokens that were compromised and leaked and allow direct access to the data. And this is something that can cause severe data breaches and it is very hard to detect. We have the near real-time storage malware scanning capability that allows you to receive very reliable, very fast results on malware scanning and allow you to create clean environments. And we have the sensitive data threat detection where we leverage the sensitive data discovery capabilities built in Defender for Cloud to send you security alerts on time on sensitive data exposure and exfiltration events. So wait a few more seconds. Seems that the malware scanning is very popular. Think that we have a problem with the poll that it is uh, limited to a number of responses so i think we've reached this limit and this is something that we'll fix for the next time but thank you very much for answering um these are pretty interesting results and we'll love to see the different rankings that uh, you provided so thank you very much we really hope you enjoyed this and I'll bring it back to Vellum for the Q&A session. Great. <clears throat> Thanks so much. Uh, the team's been great with answering questions. We do have a few uh, to ask here. Uh, the first one is, what does smart data sampling entail? Sure. So smart sampling means that we are using statistical algorithms and clustering techniques to be able to uh, find enough evidence in a storage account and containers to be able to flag that storage account as sensitive. And if we are identified that that specific storage account on containers are exposed to the internet and have public access, we immediately add it as an attack path to the uh, security admin so we can take means to address that issue. Great, thank you. The next question we have is, MS Purview can be used to discover and act on sensitive data without enabling Defender for Cloud, or is both required? No, not both required. They are separate. As I mentioned, uh, the Purview is focused on the compliance and governance. We are focused on security. Um, each one can operate on its own. Great, thank you. The next question we have is, can you please position the newly announced features against existing Microsoft Purview data governance features? Yeah, this is something that uh, we will address later on. We'll be more than happy if you can contact us and we can take you to the full comparison. Great, thank you. Next question is, your recommendations goes against your design and architecture. Majority of your services require keys to function and communicate with storage accounts. Jason, can I take that? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a really good uh, point, and uh, I'll break it down into the process that's happening in the cloud. Um, so basically, all clouds, Azure, AWS, GCP, they all started from building for efficiency, and they all started from having keys and short-lived tokens because they're much easier to use. Um, in the last few years, we've been working very closely with our partners in Azure Storage and Azure Databases 
um, and have they have made huge investments in allowing role based access for the data plane too, to support security best uh, practices. So while you are absolutely correct, there are still patterns out there and guides out there that tell you to use keys. I will say that in most cases you'll be able to replace them with role based um, access, albeit with a little ping. Um, it's it's not as smooth as keys. There are cases, there are patterns that still require you to use these keys, and there that's why we're putting in these protection in place. That's why we're both doing preventative measures by helping you use the right kind of short lived tokens. For example, identity delegated SAS is so much safer than uh, just uh, um, using a key to generate it. Um, but we're also doing active security, like Aitan just showed you in the demo, which is crucial. So we understand that it's not perfect yet. The clouds are not perfect in doing everything identity based. And that's why we feel it's such a, an important thing to do to look at keys to see entities without identities. They're here to stay in the upcoming years in all clouds, and we want to cover all clouds from the risks that they entail. Great, thank you so much. Uh, the next question we have is, how could we have prevented this data exfiltration in this example? Can you please elaborate on what you mean by this example? It, they're asking about the Sasky scenario, the exfiltration. Okay. So this is a bit tricky because preventing it means a very good security posture and wherever you can, don't use SAS tokens and wherever you can, don't use keys, use identities. But as Inbal said, it's not always the case. In case that you do, we there are best practices on how to issue shared access signatures, how to monitoring the the generation of them how to keep the scope very limited and how to keep the expiration date as um, as short as possible for the specific operations that you're con uh, conducting uh, it's not very easy to to prevent it you can do things once you have detected that something is compromised but uh, preventing it is very very um, dependent on your best practices in the organization Great. Um, that seems to be all the questions we've got. So I'd like to thank you, Zach and Aton, for being our guests today and for an excellent presentation. And thank you to the rest of the team who helped answer questions. At the same time, I would like to remind the listeners that the best way to ensure you don't miss any future webinars or major announcements is to visit our landing page at aka.ms slash security community. And while there, you'll find easy ways to navigate and find the resources and learning content relevant to our security products and their communities. A good start would be browsing our bite-sized product videos, ninja trainings, recordings of past webinars, GitHub communities, and more. We love to hear your feedback on how we can improve these webinars. Please take a minute submitting your webinar feedback at aka.ms slash security webinar feedback. Thank you and see you next time. Goodbye.